Hallelujah. Bless you, God. Come on, you don't sound like he's been good in here. Come on. If he's been better than you said he's been to you, you'd be running around this place. Come on, you said he's been better than good to you. If he's been better than good to you, how are you sitting on your feet, on your soft part of your body? Come on, if he's been better than good to you, why don't you let him know he's been better than good to you? Come on, let me hear you let him know he's been better than good to you. Yes, you've been better than good to us, God. Better to us than we have been to ourselves. And we shout with the voice of triumph. We shout with the voice of freedom. We shout with the voice of victory in this place. Come on and give the most high God some praise in this place. Come on, he's worthy of it. He's worthy of it. God is worthy of the praise. We magnify you. We magnify you. We magnify you. We praise you today. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for who you are, God. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. I'm knocking my glasses off. <laughs> Cannot for a moment think about all that he's done. And I know, men, we don't want to say we get emotional. I need men to take their game face off right now. I know, I know. We come with our game face on. But man, he's been so good. good better than good and with a God like that who shows us mercy and grace he doesn't treat us like we deserve and thank God we don't look like where we've been and what we've been through why is that because he has been better than good. I'm talking about me right now. I don't know about you, but he's been better than good to me. Come on, shout one more time. One more time. Just shout one more time. Come on, one more time. One more time. Come on, come on in the back. Come on in the back. Come on in the back. Send praises. Send praises. Send praises. Send praises. Give him glory. Make glory in the room. Make glory in the room. Make glory in the room. Thank you, God. Oh, hallelujah, you've been good, God. You've been good, God. You've been good, God. You can be seated in God's presence. You can be seated in his presence. I realize that I got a certain amount of time. But God is an awesome God. We've given glory to God. Come on, give, give some honor to your pastor in his absence. Come on. Listen, if you are a first-time guest here, just look around, and you can see the vision of the man of God here. And I'm sure with your contact with people, you can sense the love of the man of God here. Now, if you've been with a dense grunt person, that's, that's not the man of God's heart. But if you've been around a friendly person that have shown you love here today, that is the heart of the man of God that's been placed over this ministry. You see the vision and everything. So I want to invite you to come back when the man of God is here so that you can experience the fullness of what God is doing in this house. All right? Amen. Come on, let's give God some more praise and honor and glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. I realize that we are celebrating men throughout this month, so I just want to give a shout out to the men in the house today. Come on, men. Where are you? Come on, there are more men than that in here. Paul said, I would that men would lift up holy hands and give God some praise. Come on, so men are here today. Come on, let me see a few men. Where are the men at? Amen. There are men here. Come on, amen. Not just women, there are men here. So we want to celebrate the men also. Amen. Let's dive into the word together. Will you open your Bibles along with me to John's Gospel, chapter 5, and we're going to read together verses 1 through 9. Let me give a shout out now to my ride or die, Lisa. She's here with me. Amen. 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 Got my ride or die with me. Yeah, that's my ride or die. Amen. 
John's Gospel, chapter 5. Come on, let's stand and read the Word of God together, verses 1 through 9. Verses 1 through 9. Hallelujah. Are we ready for the Word? Amen. Amen. Let's read. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, a pool which is called in the Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. These day, a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at one certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water, was made well of whatever disease he had. A certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in this condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. And Jesus said to him, rise up, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well and took up his bed and walked. Father, we thank you today for your word and your spirit. Speak to me and speak through me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. I've entitled this sermon, Get Up. Come on, look at a few people and just tell them, say, get up. Come on, say it to somebody else, say, get up. I know you've been tired, but get up. I know you've been rejected, but get up. I know you're frustrated, but get up. I can feel that you're hurting now, but you can get up. Come on, turn to somebody else and just tell them, say, get up. Get up. Get up. Now is your time to get up. Men, now is your time to make a stand for the Lord. Now is your time, men, to stand up and rise to the glory that God has for you, to become the man of God that he has decreed and declared you to be. Now is the time for you to take your stand because from what I understand, real men do what? Come on, what do real men do? They get up in the home. They don't just leave it on their wives. Come on. They get up in their communities. Come on. They get up in their churches. Come on. They get up in their governments. Come on. Being real men, they get up and they take a stand. And so today in this text, we're going to look at several things. We're going to learn how we can get up. You must understand this, that God is intentional about raising you up. Don't ever for a moment become complacent with where you are. Many times we settle and we begin to receive our condition as the norm. Come on, listen to what I'm saying. How many of you today, your minds are set in and you begin to receive your condition as the norm? Maybe there's something in you that's weakening. Maybe your faith, maybe your courage, and you're starting to believe that you're going to be like that forever. But one thing that I know about Jesus Christ, no one has ever had a real encounter with Jesus and stayed the same. Come on, somebody say amen. So he wants to get you up to the position, the place, and posture of your desire. But your plans just may not be God's purpose for your life. I was talking to Deacon Sams today, and he was telling me all the plans that he had in motion and the things he was trying to accomplish. But his plans were not God's purpose. The Bible says this, men, that many are the plans in a man's heart, but the purpose of the Lord prevails. Come on, somebody say, God's purpose will prevail. Think about your life and where you are right now. You may not want to be where you are, but let me share with you, God's purpose is prevailing in your life. In this text, we see a guy, he has limited mobility, limited opportunity, and he has limited perspective. 
He also has a limited popularity. If you look at his condition, Jesus goes to him and asks him, do you want to be made whole? He said, listen, I don't have nobody to put me in. And every time I try to get in there, somebody beats me in. Why was that? If you got to shift your mind, you got to shift your thinking for a moment. You must use ambiguity here. In other words, what I'm saying, you've got to be open. In the past, when this text has been preached, they thought when Jesus asked the man, did he want to get up, that Jesus was questioning his intent. They thought the man was down for the purpose because he didn't really want to get up. And so Jesus was saying to him, see, you've been in this condition for 38 years because you really don't want to get up. But you must pay attention to the text because the Bible says that it was only one time a year that an angel would come and he would get in the water and stir it up. And only the first person in could be healed. Come on, somebody listen to what he said. But he had limited mobility because the word also says that this guy was an invalid. That means that he had a sickness or disease that kept him from being able to move the way that he wanted to move. Come on, somebody say amen here. There are men in this room, they are really intentional about getting to where they want. They are really intentional about being the men of God that God wants them to be. They are really intentional about being the husbands and the fathers and the entrepreneurs that God wants them to be. But there's something with straining their motion. There's something standing in the way of their mobility. And then he says, and I don't have a man to help me. I bet you there are a lot of men in this room today who feel all alone. A lot of men in this room today that even though they are married, even though they have family, even though they have so-called a handful of friends, they still feel like they're doing it alone. They still feel like they don't have the kind of help. Come on, men, shout if I'm in your room. Shout if I'm in your house. They still feel like I don't have the help that I need. But Jesus, listen, after all of this, says to him, do you want to be made whole? So here's what I must ask you today. What does it take for me to be made whole? First, you must understand that God is intentional. If you go back to chapter 4 and read verse number 4, you will see that the Bible says that Jesus had to go by way of Samaria. And you guys, if you know that story, you know he went through Samaria. He met a woman at the well, and this woman had a tainted past. She had some issues, and then Jesus began to deal with her infirmities. She was delivered. She went back to her community, to her village, and she told them, come meet a man that ever told me everything that I've ever done. Then the people from her community came out. They had an encounter with Jesus. Jesus transformed a whole community because he had to, say this, he had to go through Samaria. Let me tell you again that God is intentional. Say this after me. God is intentional. What will it take for me to get up? I first must realize that God is intentional. And then in verse number 23, what you or 43, you'll see, it says after two days, Jesus left for Galilee. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is that he was on purpose and he was on time. He was intentional about his direction and where he was going because he knew that every place he went that he would have an encounter with somebody. He Come on, somebody say amen in here. He knew that every that he would go, there would be somebody who was waiting on their opportunity to get up and rise for him. Verse 46, it says, once more he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine, and there he met a certain royal official whose son lay there sick. And you guys remember that? Jesus sent the word, and the same hour that Jesus sent the word to his house, the son that was getting ready to die, what happened? He got up. Somebody say, he got up. Why? Because all because God is intentional. Then the Bible says, after this, he goes to this place where this guy for 38 years had been struggling. And listen, the Bible says that at this place, there were multitudes of sick people. Come on, somebody listen. There were a lot. That's where they brought all the sick, the lame, and the folks who had issues. But Jesus bypasses all of them. He finds the dude who had been there 38 years. Come on, give God praise. And he walks up to the guy and says, do you want to get up, sir? Do you want to get up? See, all because God is intentional. Here's what the Lord told me to to tell you today. He knows where you are. Come on, somebody ought to rejoice at that sight. If you don't mind, please put the scripture on the board for me. 
Exodus chapter 3, verse number 7. It says, God said, and he's talking to Moses when he's sending Moses to deliver the children of Israel. God said, I have taken a good long look. This is the message translation. At the affliction of my people. Somebody say, God sees me. Come on, look what it says. God, I've taken a good long look at the afflictions of my people. For those of you who don't think God sees you, let me tell you again, God sees you. God knows your address. He knows where you work. He sees what you're going through. God says, oh, I see you. Tell him I see him, Moses. I've seen the affliction of my people in Egypt. Look what it says. And I have heard their cries for deliverance from their slave masters. Some of you have been crying in the middle of the night. Some of you have been crying in the morning. Men don't want people to know that they've been crying, but men been crying on the down low. But listen to what God said. Not only have I seen what you're going through, but I've been hearing your pain. I can identify with you. I know what's been keeping you up at night. I know what you're crying about your children. You're crying about your grandchildren. You're crying about your opportunity. Moses, go tell my people. Sylvester, go tell my people that I have heard their cries. <laughs> See what they're going through, and I hear what they're crying about. Not only that, tell them I'm concerned about what they're suffering. Somebody ought to give God praise today here because God cares about you. I don't care what your mind has been telling you. I don't care what your mama been telling you. I don't care what your community has been telling you. Let me tell you this, this morning that God is concerned about you. He cares about you, and not only that, he is intentional. So he walks up to this guy who's been struggling for 38 years, and he asks the guy, do you want to be made whole? Do you want to get up? Do you want to rise? Second thing we must understand if we are going to rise to the standard and the statue God wants for us is we must realize this. God is right on time. Our seasoned saints used to say this. Baby, he may not come when you want him. Come on, somebody help me finish the sentence, but he's what? He's right on time. Can you look at the impeccable time of the Lord? Just so happened he had to go through Samaria. Here's this woman. It didn't happen by accident. It happened on purpose. Jesus was on time for that woman. And after leaving that woman, he met a man whose son was dying. Jesus was on time. Come on, somebody say amen. Martha and Mary got mad at Jesus because he didn't come when they called him. But Jesus is always on time. Martha, you're looking for a day of resurrection, but you need Need to understand I am come on somebody I am the resurrection why because I'm always on time I'm always on time 38 years this man been struggling 38 years he been wanting this vision to come to pass 38 years he been wanting to see a shift in his life but he's been struggling going through He's been coming to a place for a miracle, but he had to meet the God of a miracle. Come on, somebody say amen. Come on, say amen here. He's been coming to a place for a miracle, but he had to meet the God of a miracle. Look at the scripture again. One time a year an angel will come. Stir the water. One time, look. Only one time a year can this guy get healed. But 38 years he keeps coming. 38 years or however long, the scripture is not clear on how many years he kept coming, but it was obvious that he kept coming to that same place in that same roadblock in his life. But here he meets a man, a man by the name of Jesus, who looks past everyone else and sees his condition and says to him, sir, and look what the Bible says. Oh, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. When Jesus learned that he had been in that condition for a long time, when does God ever need to learn something? Come on, somebody say amen. He doesn't need, why? Because he's omniscient. He knows everything. He don't need to learn anything. He already knows the condition. And he walks up to this guy. And at this moment, when his opportunity has passed, Jesus said, do you want to get up, sir? So not only do we need to understand that God is intentional, we need to understand that God is right on time in our lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I got to tell somebody else that today. You're frustrated at where you are. 
you're frustrated that stuff not happening the way you want. This is the nine o'clock service, so probably there are some A-type personalities in here. A-type personalities believe we can make it happen. Come on, if it's not happening, I can make it happen. But when you can't make it happen, what do you do? Can you hear the frustration in this guy's, in his voice? He's been trying to make it happen. Maybe he was in that type A person. person He's been trying to make it happen, but he couldn't make it happen. So he had to wait on the time of the Lord in order to get it to happen. Come on, understand that. Third thing you must understand is that you've got to release the power to God. If you're really going to rise, and I'm going to speak specifically to men at this moment. Men, if you're really going to rise to the standard that God wants you to, learn this that you have to give the power to God. Here is where we shift our thinking for a moment. Here's where we make a mind shift. See, men, 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 we don't like to be told what to do. If you ever, come on, come on, men, come on. I know I'm not by myself. That's why wives and, you know, people, we're, hopefully, we don't just date our potential wives, potential husbands. Come on, somebody say Amen. You on an interview. I'm not dating you. Come on. You're on an interview. Come on. Say amen here. I'm not dating you. You're on an interview. Why? Because you ain't marriage material. You got to go. Next. Come on. Say amen. But men don't like to be told what to do. And this guy walks, Jesus walks up to this guy and said, listen here, sir, if you want to be made whole, here's what I want you to do. Pick your bed up. Pick your bed up, sir. But you don't understand. I've been struggling like this for a long time. Pick your bed up. When I, but, but, but men don't like to be told what to do. Here's my point. Let me finish my point here. When you tell a man what to do, he'll put up a wall. He'll put up a fence. But if you just let the man be a man, come on, somebody, somebody's wife going to get this today. If you just let the man be a man, come on, if you just put the right kind of loving on him, he's going to get up and cut the grass. Come on, somebody say amen. Don't <laughs> nag him if you just let the man at least think it's his idea. At least let, don't take the man's manhood away. At least let him think he being the man. Come on. Jesus, is anybody here this morning? Men don't like to be told what to do. Could you see the wall getting up with this guy? Well, you don't understand, sir. Uh, 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 I've been coming here. And I, every time I try to get in the water, somebody else gets in the water before me. Why? Because I don't kind of have the kind of help I need. I don't have somebody to let me down. I don't have somebody to put me in. Jesus just said to the dude, listen here, just cut that stuff out. Get up. See, men, if you're going to rise to the standard God wants you to, you've got to let him become Lord of your life. As offensive as it may be to you, you must let Jesus, come on, somebody say, you must let Jesus tell you what to do. Not only men, but everybody in the room ought to get this today. If you want to rise up, you can't just let him be your Savior. You've got to make him your Lord. You've got to let him tell you what to do. <laughs> Sir, I know how you've been thinking. But I got to shift your thinking for a moment. You think your healing is in your getting in the pool, but your healing is not getting in the pool. Your healing is now. Your healing is in this encounter with me. You got to get up. Remember when Elijah told Name, and I want you to go to the Jordan River, and I want you to dip seven times, and your leprosy, your condition will be healed. Well, that was the nastiest river around. Why are you sending me to the nastiest river around to heal me and cure me? Listen, don't question me. Just do what I told you. Anybody got any church? Children in the house or grandchildren or nieces or nephew and they say well why you want me to do it do it because I told you to do it it ain't no explanation just do it why because I said so if you're gonna rise up you must make Jesus the Lord of your life. That means you must relinquish the power. You got to give up the decision making to the Lord. Why? Because many are the plans in the man's heart, but only the purpose of the Lord is going to prevail. Chapter 9, Jesus meets this blind man. Been like that for a very long time. The Bible says Jesus spits on the ground and out of his saliva makes some mud. Rubs it on the guy. I say, now go wash 
in the pool of Siloam. Go wash in the pool of scent. Listen to what the guy had to do. If he wanted to be healed, he couldn't question the Lord. What did he need to do? He needed to give up the power. He needed to make Jesus Lord. He needed to allow him to tell him what to do. Men, we must give up that place of king in the home. I know we want to be king, but come on, you need to let Jesus be the king. Come on, somebody say that. Young men, you need to let Jesus be the king. Come on. Young women, you need to let Jesus be the king of your life. Don't make him the king. You see, the way a woman can submit to the man is if Jesus is Lord and not him being Lord. Come on, somebody say amen. You got to give up the power. You got to let him tell you what to do. You see, this man had movement, but he needed momentum. Come on, listen, there's a difference between movement and momentum. Can I have two volunteers very quickly? Come on, two men, really quick. I should have staged this. Come on, two men, right fast, right fast. Come to the stage. Two men, two men, right fast to the stage. <laughs> Deacon Stems, what's what I want you to do? I want you to push this brother. Just, just try to move him now. Not hard, just try to move him. Well, don't really let him move you, but just try to move him. Come on. Yeah. He had movement, but nothing was moving. Now push him and let him let you move. He had movement, but no momentum. He kept going towards the pool, but nothing was happening. Thank you, man. Nothing was moving. Nothing was shifting in his life. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. See, move, momentum is the force behind your move. And this guy say, I keep moving towards the pool, but somebody keep beating me in. Come on, somebody say amen. There's somebody in the room who feel like I'm the left behind. I'm the one that keep trying, but somebody else keep beating me. Come on, somebody say amen. I got a book in my spirit. Can't say it now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I got a book in my spirit, but God told me, listen, there is times in your life when you're going to see people doing the things that you want to do in life, but you just got to wait a moment. You just got to wait a moment. Why? Because you don't just need movement, you need momentum. The man had movement, but he had no momentum. He kept trying to get in the pool, but he couldn't get in because somebody kept beating him in. Come on, somebody say amen here. Amen. Secondly, not only did the man have m m movement and no momentum, you must understand that he had a lot of attempts, but he didn't have the right strategy. See, the reason why we got to wait on the Lord and give him power over our lives is because we got a plan and we got the things we're trying to do, but we need a strategy. Come on. We need to plan to come together. And come on, you ever been trying to do something at the wrong time? It was the right thing, but it was just the wrong timing. Come on, somebody say amen. The God genuinely wanted to be healed, but it just was the wrong timing. I took you to that scripture because God said, I see you. I know what you're going through. I know what you're crying about, but just not yet. See, every time you're praying doesn't mean that God is saying no. He just might be saying, not yet. Not yet. It's not the time yet. Ecclesiastes tells us that to everything under the sun, there is appointed both a season and a time. It wasn't that God didn't want to heal the man. Somebody get this. It just wasn't the season and the time, right, lining up together. Okay, let me help you out. You ever went to the store? Because I like watermelon. That ain't just an ethnic thing. I love watermelon. But I just like a sweet watermelon. But you ever went and bought a watermelon and you look at it, but it ain't ripe. You got it at that time, but it's not the season yet for it. Oh, somebody ought to shout in here. You were able to buy it at that time, but it wasn't in season. God sent me here to tell somebody today, it's not that I don't want you to have it, but I just need the season and the time to line up together. And at the right moment in your life, Everything you've been pushing for, everything you've been working for, everything you've been crying about is all going to line up in a strategy. Because when the man's ways pleases the Lord, even his enemies are made to be at peace with him. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will give you a strategy. He will make your path straight. Somebody come on and give God some praise in this place. 
Understand I'm intentional about your life. Understand, God says to you, not only am I intentional, not only do I know the right time, but you've got to release the power to me. See, this man, he was tenacious. How do I know that? Because he said, I come to the pool. That means that that was a present, continuous participle. He didn't just come, but he kept on coming. Somebody asked me, Pastor, how have you been married to Lisa for over 30 years? I just tell them this. Here's the success. Not because I'm good. Not because she do it. I'm a real pastor in a real house. Come on, with a real marriage. We don't always do everything right. We probably don't always like each other. Somebody will get that that's real in the place. We probably don't always like each other. But guess what? At the end of the day, at the end of the day, I keep going home. <laughs> she keep coming home. So we've been married for 30 something years because we keep at it. We keep trying. It's hard, but come on, somebody get this who ain't married yet. It's hard, but we keep working at it. We keep struggling. We have some not so nasty days and some arguments, but guess what? We still keep coming. The man kept coming to that place, even though he was frustrated. Even though he was discouraged, even though things wasn't happening quite the way that he wanted to happen, he kept on coming to that place until one day a man with a limited mobility, limited possibility, and not many opportunities meets Jesus. Oh, come on. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Lord told me to rust this to you right quick before I give you my point, fourth point and close. Listen to this. If I can get a few young people to hashtag this, tweet it, IG it, whatever you do, just do it for me. <laughs> Remember this, if you keep looking up and thinking up and reaching up, eventually God will get you up. Come on, somebody say that. Let me say it one more time. If you keep looking up, I will lift my eyes to the hills. You keep thinking up, set your affections on thing above. You keep reaching up. Come on, somebody say amen. Oh, eventually God will get you up. One day God's going to come to your house. Come on, somebody say amen. One day God's going to step in your situation, and there's going to be a shift in your life. There's going to be, oh, I come to tell somebody that this morning. There's going to be a shift in your life, and guess what? Suddenly. Oh, somebody say Suddenly. Might have been 38 years he'd been struggling, but all of a sudden, he meets Jesus, and Jesus said, you know what, 38 years of struggling, just get up. Come on, somebody say, thank you, Tasha Cobbs, because Jesus is the chain breaker. Come on, somebody say, Jesus is the chain breaker. I don't know what's been holding you and keeping you bound, but all of a sudden, Jesus said, get up, and the Bible says immediately, that brother just got on up. Start walking around. And listen, if, he been, if he's 38 years old and he's never walked, don't know if that's the case because the Scripture's not clear on how old he was. But if he hadn't walked in 38 years, you would think he needed some strength. You ever seen a little toddler trying to learn how to walk? Boom. <laughs> boom. Trying to stand up, boom. But Jesus said to this guy, all of a sudden, get up. The guy got up, and he started walking around. Somebody ought to give God praise. Because see how God can recover lost time? When you think things are not happening in the time you want to, all of a sudden, God can shift the momentum. Final point, final point. If you are going to raise up to the position that God wants you to and you desire, I know I'm pretty much redundant in saying this again, but let me just say this. Get it. You have to wait on God. For they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like an eagle. They shall walk and not faint. They shall run and not get weary. Come on, let me tell you something. Come on. Those of you who want to be married, please just wait on God. Wait on God. Don't, don't rush. Don't rush. 
into it and accept for less when God has your best in mind. Remember the God that created you. Adam didn't need to tell God that he needed a woman. God looked at him and said, it's not good for that brother to be by himself. I think I'm going to bring him somebody, listen, that's going to meet his need. If you're going to raise up to the place and position that God has for you, you must learn to be patient, people. Listen to what I'm saying. I don't know what your plans are. I don't know what your hustle is. I don't know what you're trying to accomplish in your life. But there are just some things that will not happen in your life until God says so. There, come on, somebody, look at this man's circumstances. There are just some things that won't happen until in your life, until God moves in your life. See, the man wasn't making, I'm about to be closing in a minute. Man wasn't really waiting on a move of the water. You know where I'm going, don't you? He was waiting on a move of God. He wasn't waiting on a move of the water. He was waiting on a move of God. And when God starts moving in your life, guess what? Nothing will be able to stop what God, come on, give him praise. I'm about to close in a minute. Nothing will be able to stop what God has in store for your life. Come on, you ought to give him some praise. Why? Because God not only wants you to get up, but he also desires that you will stand up and move forward. Then Jesus said to the guy, get up, but listen, take up your bed and walk. But Lord, why do I need to carry this bed around? Why do I need to walk with the thing that you should have delivered me from? Why my bed? Why? You didn't just say get up, but you said get up and take up. Come on, somebody say, this man's testimony is at work now. Come on. Come on. He gets up, then he takes up his bed, and the old religious folks look at him and say, you know what? It's the religious day. What you doing walking around with your bed? Get this. This going to blow some of your mind. He said, all I know is the man that told me to get up told me to take up my bed. You, you missed the text. He didn't even know who Jesus was. He didn't know Jesus. He didn't know that was the Messiah. He didn't know that was the Savior. Same with the blind man in chapter 9. He didn't know that was Jesus. The Bible says after Jesus healed him, Jesus left out of his life. The guy got up, the religious folks looked at him and said, you shouldn't be walking around with your bed, sir. He said, all I know is the man that told me to get up, told me to take up my bed, and I'm just doing what he told me to do. Come on. Somebody say amen in this way. I'm just doing what he told me to do. Hallelujah. I'm just doing what he told me to do. And they start questioning the man about his testimony. Why are you walking around with that bed on the religious day? Then Jesus crept back into the man's life. See, just keep on praying for him. You ain't got to try to shove the gospel down their throat. Just keep on praying for him. Come on. One day they're going to get an illumination to the revelation. Come on, somebody say amen. And they're going to learn who Jesus is. Come on, somebody say amen. At that moment, this guy's life was forever changed. Somebody, someone to say amen in here. Come on, stand to your feet. Is there people in this room whose lives have been forever changed? Oh, because God was intentional about where they were. He was intentional about raising them up. And Father, we want to thank you this morning for what you've done in this room. Break the chains. Remove the shackles. Shift the mindsets of your people who have become complacent and accepting of their condition as the norm and let them know this day that a forever change is in their lives. And God, I just release the power from heaven to move in their lives. Not that I can release it, but you said what we loose on earth is what's been loosed in heaven. You said what we bind on earth has been bound in heaven. And God, as I know your power and presence is moving in this room, I pray now that everything that you have in store and you want to do today, that we'll receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Come on, let's give God some praise for that incredible word today. 